So what would you say if I were to tell you that scientists have revealed that they have found a revolutionary new treatment that is going to aid you in being happier, fighting off cancer, decreasing the risk of getting a stroke, decreasing the risk of getting diabetes, decreasing the risk of getting depressed, strengthening your entire body, strengthening your immune system. What would you say? <laughs> you would probably say you want this treatment right away, right? <laughs> and as you might assume by the title of this video, obviously this treatment is available to you every single second of the day, your entire lives. And the sad truth though is that we don't really maximize the effect that we can have with this treatment. And we are obviously talking about sleep. Sleep obviously is a very natural state of our lives. Sleep is something we are wired to do. It's wired inside of us. It is something we cannot escape. If you're sleep deprived, you'll die at some point. So we really, really essentially need sleep and proper sleep in our lives. And nature does all its repairing work while we're asleep. So basically we really, really necessarily need these sleep stages and healthy sleep stages in our lives to really be able to repair from the inside, to really be able to allow our bodies and our biochemical processes to really get back to a healthy state. So let's get an understanding of sleep stages in general, to get an understanding of why every single sleep stage is so important. So basically we've got the wake state, which is all about reception. So you're basically taking in everything that has been happening around you and just taking in a lot of information and triggers. Then we've got the non-rapid eye movement stage or NREM state in short, which is all about reflection. So you're basically just taking in that information and storing all the raw ingredients, as you could say, in your system. So that's what your mind is doing for you, obviously. And then you've got rapid eye movement stage, in short REM stage, which is all about then integration. So this stage is all about taking in this raw information and really integrating this information in everything in your entire concept of mind basically so everything that ever has been happening to you tying it to that basically molding it into your entire memory system that you already have and really working through the information that the nrem state has provided in a raw form basically and so this REM state is just really, really important because it allows you to actually work through a memory and information of something that has been happening throughout the day, while at the same time having really anxiety triggering reflections in your mind being shut off and also having physical responses being shut off. And this REM stage is actually something that is so, so important in the work that I do with clients because I have been talking about the relaxing state I'm putting clients in to be able to actually access the subconscious information that is stored inside of you. The rapid eye movement or REM sleep really, really communicates calming signals to our mind and to our fight and flight response. So that basically means when you're asleep and you're experiencing the REM sleep phase, then that has ha is having a really calming effect on you. So you're actually able to balance out everything that has been happening throughout the day. And as we already concluded in the other videos, we are experiencing in a modern world so many fight or flight triggering um, signals that it is really hard for us that we're kind of like in a constant overload state and we're kind of like in a constant fight or flight re um, response, which is a really destructive state to be in. So matching that in addition with really bad sleep quality you can see how you're just creating your own toxic cocktail, right? Now you might say, okay, there's studies out there that show um, that six hours are enough, that you can still function on six hours. And that might be right, but we really need to differentiate between your sleep quality. So that level of six hours might be enough for you to be able to function and get through the day in some kind of way, but it's not the level that you need for your body as a system to be healthy. So to make that a bit more clear, we can also think about it in a way that we say to ourselves, so how old do we want to get? And so here the emphasis was, would kind of be in that question on the old part, right? So how old do you want to get in your life? 
But here's the trick, and that applies to this entire sleep topic. How do you want to get old? That's the question. It's really about sleep quality. It's about what do you, as a biochemical process, as a body that is running on this entire process, what do you need to have a healthy body? So let's talk about the subconscious spiral that is oftentimes happening to us. I would say a lot of people have probably experienced that. I definitely have. And it is so co it's so complex in that regard that we oftentimes think, okay, I'm just going to go to bed earlier and I'm just going to try to just go to sleep earlier. But that's oftentimes just not happening and just not working because these subconscious pressures, if they are not addressed, they are not going to go away. They're not just going to decide one day, okay, I'm out of here. This was, this was it. Um, they need to be solved to be able to leave you and to be able to release you. And again, neuro associations here in this regard. So really watching your language and the way you're talking to yourself is a really essential part. So let's say this mainly applies for English. So for other languages, you'll have to watch for the triggering negative words there. But for example, in English, um, oftentimes we're saying, oh, I'm falling asleep, or I cannot fall asleep. Oh, oh this is so hard for me falling asleep. I really want to fall asleep now. But again, as you might assume, fall is a word that's very negatively loaded. So when our mind hears fall, that's actually triggering anxiety and anxious thoughts within us. Because the word fall as such is just an increasing danger in our minds. The word fall means, okay, I'm falling, something's happening to me, maybe I'm injured or I'm falling off something. So it's just very, the connotation of this word is just very, very negative for our minds. And so since the mind doesn't get this information filtered, the mind just hears fall and instantly decides, okay, that's, I'm not quite sure about that state. I don't, I don't quite want you to go there because <laughs> that kind of seems dangerous. And so here you could ob obviously replace these kind of words and aid yourself in such a way that you help yourself by really giving your mind positive and calming instructions. So in this case, this would be and you're telling yourself, sleep is coming to me. I'm inviting sleep into my life. I'm inviting sleep into my bed with me now, for example. And this might sound so silly in the beginning when you first hear about these kind of things. But if you really think about it for a longer time, and if you've been practicing this for a really long time, then you can really see the effects. And it's having a really, really strong effect right away once you start really practicing these kind of things. And so it's very helpful to just maybe analyze your language a little bit. What can you do there to already tweak a little bit to help yourself to get yourself out of this unresourceful state? Because we all know, right, when we're lying in bed and we want to go to sleep and we want sleep to come to us and it's just not happening, then that's creating so much pressure on us and we're getting so frustrated and so annoyed and you're lying in bed and you just cannot sleep and it's just adding so, so much pressure, which is, if the core is not addressed, is not going to be just resolved by itself. And so the silent sleep loss epidemic is actually one of the greatest challenges of the 21st century in the developed countries. It's so often not talked about and it's so often overlooked what an intense effect watching your sleep quality can have. Shouldn't it be more about proactively conserving your health and proactively doing something for your health? Give your body this chance to be the best possible and strongest body. And from here on, I just want to thank you for tuning in again. I um, hope you found something beneficial in this video. And I hope I was able to share some valuable knowledge with you. 